Hey there, crew. This is Geology Professor Sean Wilsey. Today is December 20th, 2024, and I wanted to put together a short video to give you a little bit of a follow-up update on the earthquake that happened in western Nevada on December 9th. Uh, this was in western Nevada. People felt it in Reno, Carson City, across parts of California, all the way to the coast in the San Francisco area. So let's go over the earthquake a little bit in detail, and then I'm going to show you a report that's been compiled by... Uh, Folks at UNR and the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology, some officials there have gone out into the field, captured some photos or some more analysis there that I want to share with you. And then I'll put a link to that, all that information and data you can check out on your own. I'll put that in the video description. So real quick, uh, the earthquake actually was downgraded to a 5.7 um, after the preliminary uh, earthquake information came through. So it's been downgraded slightly to a 5.7, but still a substantial quake. Uh, definitely caught people's attention. Thankfully, again, not destructive, not nearly the magnitude we would need to see uh, damage and fatalities on a large scale. Um, the depth, this says 9.3 kilometers, but I've got some other information that, that suggests it was a little bit deeper, around 12 kilometers, which is about seven miles in depth. It happened at about 3.08 local time, again, on December 9th, 3.08 p.m., the afternoon. Um, and... As we looked at earlier when I did the first update, the preliminary uh, moment tensor solution or the beach ball indicates that it was a left lateral fault. So movement on a left lateral fault that has more or less a northeast southwest orientation or strike to it. So there's some of the basic data there, which you can, of course, look at. Here is a I pulled up the, the record of the aftershocks there. So the main shock there is shown in blue. That's the primary earthquake. And then you can see all the aftershocks. We've had about 300 aftershocks in the first three days and about, let's see, 470 total. So this map is showing 470 aftershocks in this region from this initial 5.7 quake on December 9th. Um, again, you can nicely sort of pick out there the, the trend of that, that northeast, southwest striking fault. So a lot of these aftershocks are happening on or very close to that fault. And then there's some... Uh, scattered ones here that don't seem to have any sort of um, arrangement or structure or orientation to define them. So not sure uh, what to make of these, but uh, typical kind of pattern we might see with with this type of these types of quakes. So let's get right to the nitty gritty of the analysis here. So again, uh, here is the report. They're actually calling this the the Parker Butte earthquake. So it's actually been given a name, probably mainly for uh, the most noteworthy feature nearby topographic feature. Um, and so the, I won't read this to you. You can read this on your own, but I'll hit the highlights for you. So they, uh, University of Nevada, Reno, and some state officials went out into the area where the earthquake occurred. And that's pretty common of an earthquake this size to get on the ground and see if there's any indication that there was any sort of what the surface effects were. How did this earthquake affect the actual land? You know, of outcrops of rock, are, are there cracks running through the ground? Those are the sorts of things that they want to see in the few days after the earthquake and document if those things took place. So there was no surf, surface rupture from this earthquake. So the, the faulting itself, which was mainly, again, strike slip, uh, did not produce, the fault plane itself didn't break through at the surface. Usually for something like that to happen, we would need to see more dip slip motion. So we'd need to see more up and down motion versus side to side motion. But sometimes these strike slip faults can produce that. They can produce offset at the surface, like with the San Andreas fault. We did not see that with this earthquake, which is, is not too uh, out of the ordinary. Typically it takes around a six, maybe 6.5 usually typically to see surface rupture, but there was no surface rupture. Mainly the effects were uh, some secondary effects, and I'll show you some photos here of those. Um, so what this was, was this was a blind fault. This was a fault that produced a movement and offset in the subsurface, and it did displace rocks in the subsurface, but that energy, once it worked its way to the surface, there wasn't enough energy to break through to the surface and um, cause any offset at the surface. So mainly secondary effects from the shaking. And so let me just take you to the photos here. So they've taken uh, photos uh, when they were out in the field and documented things that they believed were related to the earthquake. So things here like some fresh um, material that toppled that may have been caused by the earthquake. Um, you can see some slide material here. 
Uh, this one here, let's see, bedrock outcrop. Majority of the slope debris remained in place during the earthquake. However, a few boulders rolled down the hill. So sometimes you can tell like fresh material that shifted and moved versus stuff that's been sitting there for, for quite some time. Um, possibly in this drainage ditch, which, which is frozen, you can see some cracks in the ice. So that possibly was related to the shaking. Um, again, just looking for what the earthquake might have done. And sometimes it's, it's clear cut and sometimes it's, it's a little bit more speculative. Some of this bank collapse here along uh, the Walker River. So you can see some of this fresh collapse here, which was probably related to the earthquake. Um, same thing here. This is just a little bluff here with some of the material that probably collapsed due to the shaking and that material becoming uh, un it's unsupported and therefore it, it starts to slide shaking. Um, here's a playa surface. You can see these mud cracks here caused when the wet mud starts to dry out and the water evaporates. Um, but there's no other related cracks here in the playa surface and just not enough shaking in this locality based on the earthquake, the size of this earthquake to cause anything there. Uh, this one's just a view over the epicentral area. And here is a boulder that actually shifted and rotated down slope a little bit. You can see sort of the color of the soil here. So this thing's actually presumably shifted just a bit during the earthquake. So kind of neat to see just the secondary effects of the earthquake as well. Uh, cracks around this, uh, let's see, the power line road bridge over the Walker River. A little bit of separation and some cracks in the ground there around this uh, concrete foundation material here for the bridge. Undoubtedly, you know, these fresh things here are undoubtedly related to earthquake and the shaking. Um, yeah, a little bit of lateral spreading. You can see maybe this curved face here where this is actually slid down into... Uh, the river here along the Walker River. So you can see some cracks here. Um, basically, this is a bit of a liquefaction the subsurface material or this material here at the surface um, getting was saturated and, and slid a little bit. Earthquake. There was some, some minor sand boils here, some small sand boils. This is where the um, saturated sediments, which is saturated from the groundwater where the water table's high, actually liquefies that sandy material. And it can rise up and form little kind of almost like a mini little volcano, but you can get that pressurized um, water slurry, sed water sediment slurry rising up to the surface and then forming these little kind of boil features here. Usually that happens for a few seconds or minutes. And then once that uh, the shaking ends, that sort of solidifies in place and is preserved here. So this one here is about 50 to 75 centimeters long, 30, 40 centimeters wide, and about 10 centimeters or about four or five inches or so high. And it mainly consists of this well-sorted sand here. So kind of neat here to see the extent of some of the, the secondary effects there from the, and then this is a map, I think, showing the, the pins showing where they took a lot of these photos. Got, those located so you are aware of where those was, were taken. Um, and then going back to the report here, they talk about the aftershocks, which we kind of mentioned, and that they deployed two extra, uh, two additional seismometers in the area to help them to get better constraints and data from the seismic, not just the aftershocks, but if there were to be a, another event in the future. So just again, a quick little update, some interesting things that I wanted to share with you about this 5.7 now earthquake that occurred in uh, Western Nevada um, here on December 9th. So hopefully that a little bit helpful, shedding a little bit of light. I did that first update like within you know, a few minutes or hours or whatever after the earthquake, but then it's neat sometimes to, I think, get that analysis from the experts and then be able to look at that and learn a little bit. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hope you're well, and we'll see you next time. Take care.